often when people are noise hunting around their bikes, they completely overlook cables. Now they can rattle against each other, they can crack and creak, and generally make noises you wouldn't think could come from such innocuous little beggars. In terms of frame design, the jury is still out as to whether cables should go internally or externally. With the advent of carbon, more cables seem to be rooted inside the frame, so it's more prevalent perhaps on your high-end bikes, but there is no definitive right answer, and they both suffer from the same problem. They can make a bloody racket. So here are 10 handy dandy ways to keep your cables running quiet. Here we have a product from Jaguar, which is internal hose damping. To look at it, it looks like some pipe lagging from the borrowers, but it's pretty obvious what it does. It stops cables banging into each other or themselves whilst inside your frame. It's pretty light, reusable, and it's an absolute godsend for some frames that just refuse to be quiet. Mr. Cable Tie in for the rescue again. This one is where we actually tail the cable to form a nice little loop which presses up against the frame. It's not so much about stopping cables banging into each other, but about keeping them in a secure position inside potentially quite a large tube. Really simple to do, very cheap, and actually really, really reliable. This is some shrink wrap. It's absolutely fantastic. It takes a bit of foresight, but with due planning, it can make your cockpit look dynamite. And yeah, it's the anti-frizz serum of the bike world. You cut it to length, slot it over your cables, and then you, with a heat gun, you basically apply heat and it shrinks to size. It looks great. The only reason I don't like it is perhaps in a crash it can tear, and then it's a big job to redo. But if you're perhaps a bit, a bit more of a safe rider than me, you'll, um, you can keep your bike looking smart for so long and it looks absolutely fantastic. If you do find you're perhaps a bit more crash happy, this is another really good alternative. It basically is tape that bonds itself on both sides and it's maybe a slightly more premium option than electrical tape, but it is very rugged. And if you do kind of cut it, you can also reapply more with the cables still in the bike. I don't think I need to do much explaining when I say sensible routing, but it is so important. When I look at a bike, Personally, I prefer it when they don't cross up the head tube, but that's complete personal preference. And with modern frames, it is quite easy to get them to go to the entry point without them bouncing off your head tube or any other part of the frame. It's also worth thinking about, if you're to run a number board on the front of your bike, how and what it's gonna to do to cables. Sometimes people have very neat routing and they find that once they put a number board on, it all goes a bit haywire. Also look at your brake calipers. Do they have a pivot point at the banjo? and can they be run as direct as possible with as little rattle chance as possible. If you want to stop the cables themselves touching together, then you can do so by using one of these cable ferrules as a bump stop in the middle. Really simple to do. You just chop off the end there and use it as a bit of tubing. It can look really, really neat, and I love it how the cables look all parallel to each other. Pretty foolproof way, and the benefit of these is they don't seem to shuffle down the cables like a normal cable tie would. Rubber mastic tape, or even Velcro tape, is a great way to not only stop noise, but also protect your frame when you're running your cables externally. You can either leave it in little strips underneath and along, or you can even run the whole length. This is particularly good, perhaps, on the underside of a top tube. It's also not crazy to see it, on the inside of chain devices, just to stop that rattle and that wear, and also lining stays. It's an absolute godsend in it. Yeah, it can make your bike run so quiet and smooth. And like I said, it keeps your frame looking better for longer. When you want your cables to be in a static point and very close to a frame tube, actually just running it through a washer like so, and making like a figure of eight loop, it's a really, really good way to keep it secure. This is especially useful when perhaps the way that your hose roots out of your caliper isn't quite as you'd like it to be, but you can keep it in one spot, safe and secure on the stay with this. Doesn't always look the neatest, if I'm honest, but um, it definitely serves a purpose. This transparent, I think it's just some water hose, is 
really, really good for protecting your cables when they are outside of the frame. If your cables like are Mondre because they actually go beneath the bottom bracket, they can be really vulnerable to rock strikes. Also very good is when you loop it and it goes around to the derailleur. This can actually stop it vibrating on the frame and it's a lot softer than the hard metal encased in plastic that makes up an outer cable. Also what's really good is you can cut it to length and a length maybe an inch or two long is really good for running either side of a head tube or either side of a seat tube while keeping cables really secure even though they're further away. You'll actually see it often people on race bikes might have a length of this to keep their front brake hose off their number board just to stop it vibrating because it can be really, really noisy, especially when you're going warp speed. Tiny, tiny cable ties are actually my weapon of choice, really. Perhaps it doesn't look as refined or as, you know, pre-thought out, but I just think it looks really good. But there's some really important topics around this. The main one, and it's you're going to think I'm an idiot, but I don't care, you've got to stand to your guns. You've got to always have the cable ties going in the same direction. You know, notice how that one's slightly different? No, please don't do it to me. It pains me, it breaks my heart. You can also do them in like a figure of eight looping around there, which is very good in that it stops the cable perhaps sliding along as much as a lot more resistance. Um, I just love the tried and tested small cable tie, really neat. And especially when you have your cables all together cut the right exact length, it just looks so smart. Park Tool actually make these ZP5 cutters. And the reason they're so good is they get it incredibly flush. If you are running cable ties on your frame, especially if it's on perhaps your down tube, make sure that you get that really flush, even if you have to get a little file to it. Because if you come off, you can actually cut your leg pretty badly. Um, I've fallen foul of that when I was younger. So yeah, something like that is great. If you don't have this perfect tool, you can actually get some normal cutters and I've actually rubbed them on a grinder before until they sit really flush. This is perhaps one of the bodgier ones, but it is actually very good. Sometimes when you have an entry port on a frame that perhaps doesn't have a rubber grommet and it is one tube, one channel, and the cables aren't bounce, bouncing around on the whole frame, but rather a slightly larger diameter tube, you can basically slide a cable tie straight in, down the length of the tube, it doesn't seem to rattle out, nor does it fall in thanks to the end. And it's amazing how well it works. Like I said, it's a bit of a bodge, but if it gets you out of a spot of bother and keeps your bike running silent, then who cares? It's not uncommon for people to store cable ties in their bottom bracket because they are very useful to have on a ride. So it can also double up as a neat solution to two problems. Well, that is it from me. That's how to keep your cables running silent. If perhaps you could dream of a day, cast back into the distant memories of mountain biking before bike designer had even come up with the concept of internal cable routing and there were no mechanics complaining about it in bike shops, then you can actually click here. Dolly did a really cool retro versus modern on the old Newt Proof Reactor, which is one hell of a bike. And if you perhaps want to spend some more time in the workshop, hack some more stuff, maybe bodge is a better word, I've actually got some tools that I slapped together over the years and you can click down there to check that one out. Cheers.